the shape of the yield curve has two major theories to interpret its characteristics these theories are the expectation theory and the liquidity preference theory first is the expectation hypothesis theory uh, we see that the forward rate is the market consensus expectations of future short interest rate this means that the forward rate is the uh, subject of the expected future rate and it also assumes zero liquidity premium uh, the observed long term rate is a function of today's short term rate and the expected future short term rates if we uh, ex uh, express this in equation form we will see that 1 plus y2 raised to power 2 is equal to 1 plus y1 into 1 plus f2 here 1 here f2 is the forward rate and uh, y2 is the uh, rate at the end of year 2 or it is the yield at maturity the expectation hypothesis may also conclude then that 1 plus y2 square is equal to 1 plus y1 into 1 plus expected return at the end of year 2 so it it is proving that the uh, return uh, forward rate is the function of the expected rate of return for the uh, year to come or the second year the ytm can be determined solely by the current yield which is y1 and the expected rate of return uh, which is er2 or the expected return on second year future it is future single interest rate an upward slope, uh, sloping yield curve may indicate that the investor anticipates an increases in the interest rate or rising interest rates this theory does is not limited to the nom uh, uh, nominal bonds only it can also be applied to the term structure of real interest rates as well it helps in learning the market expectation of coming in inflation rates second is the liquidity preference theory uh, we see that short term investors hold long term investment or long term bonds if f2 is greater than the uh, expected return of the year 2 long term investors will hold short term bond if the scenario is reversed means if expected return is greater than the f2 this means that in investors in fact demand high interest rate on bonds with long term maturities having greater risk so they demand risk premium for the uh, maturity risk whereas short term investors dominate the market so that the forward rate or f2 will generally exceed the expected or e or er2 short rates this means that this liquidity premium is predicted to be positive and that is the liquidity premium which this short term investor is demanding to understand this we have an example where uh, we can see the implications of term structure interest rate theories we see that the short interest rate is expected to be constant indefinitely like if we have uh, r1 equal to 5 percent then we assume that the r2 or r3 will also be equal to 5 percent and so on now under the expectation hypothesis the year 2 yield to maturity can be derived using the equation that is uh, we multiply the 1.05 into 1.05 to determine yield at the maturity of two years and we have a value of 1.1025 this means that y2 is equal to 5 percent so the bonds yield on all the maturities would also be equal to 5 percent now under the liquidity preference theory the y2 would exceed er2 this means that there would be the liquidity premium now assume that liquidity premium is 1 percent so f2 is 5 plus 1 is equal to 6 percent then the value of two years bond will be determined using the similar formula that 1 plus r1 into 1 plus f2 and we have the value of r1 equal to 5 percent and the value of f2 
uh, is a uh, six percent that we have uh, just computed. So the yield at the year two would be equal to now uh, one point one three. This means that a uh, one plus y two is equal to one point zero five five. Similarly, we can determine the value of F three, which is equal to six percent. So the yield on yield uh, three years bond can also be determined in the similar way. So now we have again the repeated formula that one plus R one into one plus F two into one plus F three. So the yield on year three. Would be equal to 1.05 into 1.06 into 1.06. That is 1.1798. So that is the uh, yield in year three. Uh, so how these uh, yield to maturities are related with the expected rate of return and the forward rates? In the left panel, we see that we have a constant expected short rate. Uh, and that is the this thick uh, uh, black line. This shows that there is a liquidity premium of one percent, and that is constant between the thick blue and the thick black line. The result is that we have a rising yield curve in this particular case. In the second case, we where we have a declining expected short rates in the form of this thick black line. We see that we have an a uh, increasing trend in our liquidity premium and that is increasing from this onward this the result is that we have a rising yield curve which shows that of the falling expected interest rate and that is the rising yield curve the expected rates are falling in in this way in the third case we have a scenario where we have the expected short rates at the declining stage and that are declining here we see a uh, constant liquidity premium which is available between the blue and black thick lines the result is that we have a humped shaped yield curve in this particular case and in another case where we see the increasing expected short rates in the form of this rising blue uh, black line we see an increasing liquidity premium which is available between these thick blue and the thick black line the result is that we see a sharp increase in the yield curve in this particular case the conclusion of this discussion is that if interest rates are expected to change over time the liquidity premium may be used with the expected spot rates to determine the forward rate of interest and the yield to maturity for each date will be an average of the single period forward rate of interest.